Hi, I'm Noreen and I'm an enthusiastic do-it-yourselfer. I'm about to show you how you can carry out a home renovation project in an older home in ways that will protect you and your family from lead poisoning. And I'm Patrick, another do-it-yourselfer. Noreen and I want to talk about lead safety because lead poisoning is a serious illness that can cause permanent harm, especially to children. But before we get started, please note, this video is primarily geared toward do-it-yourselfers like us. It is not intended for landlords, property managers, or paid contractors. Those folks have to follow specific rules issued by the Environmental Protection Agency. If you're hiring a contractor to do some or all of the work on a house built before 1978, make sure that the firm and key workers are certified under EPA's Renovation, Repair, and Painting Program, or RRP, and that all workers are trained in lead safety. There's more information about RRP at the end of this program. So this video is for do-it-yourselfers who are doing repairs and small renovations? Yep. Anything bigger like tearing down a wall or replacing a window, and you should probably take a training course in lead safety. But for now, let's get started with our project. Patrick and I are about to repaint the trim in this bedroom, but we want to do it safely. Because our house was built in 1941, there's a good chance it has lead paint. If we do any work without proper precautions, we could put ourselves and everyone around us at risk for lead poisoning. It's a very serious illness. You're right. It says here that if your home was built before 1978, it might have been painted with lead paint. If it was built before 1960, it probably does contain lead paint, especially on the doors, windows, trim, stairways, railings, and porches. If the old lead paint is in good condition and you won't be disturbing it, it shouldn't be a problem. But if you'll be sanding, scraping, or otherwise disturbing painted surfaces, as we will, you'll almost certainly create dust and debris that contain lead. Hmm. Maybe I'll just watch. No, you'll be helping. And this is serious business. People can breathe in or swallow the dust and become lead poisoned. Small children might also swallow paint chips and become lead poisoned. Lead poisoning is especially dangerous to babies and young children whose brains and bodies are still developing. It can cause serious problems with learning, behavior, and health. Lead is also dangerous to unborn babies, and once the damage is done, it's permanent. Lead can also cause serious health problems in adults, including you, if you're doing the work yourself. Okay, message received. But you can work safely around lead paint if you follow some simple precautions. And that's what we're here for, to explain the steps to lead safety. So how do we get started? As we said earlier, lead paint might be present in any home built before 1978. If that's the case, you have a few options. You might decide to have your home tested for lead paint. A certified lead inspector or lead inspector risk assessor should do the testing. Although you can have just the work area tested, it's usually better to have the entire home inspected and tested. Then you will know how to handle future painting and renovation projects. Can we do the testing ourselves? Yes, as long as we use a test kit approved by the EPA. These kits are available at many hardware and home improvement stores. Just follow the directions on the test kit carefully and test all surfaces that will be disturbed. But if testing isn't possible or practical, use this safety principle. If the home was built before 1978, assume that lead paint is present and follow the steps to work lead safe. Sounds like a plan. We'll assume our house has lead paint. What's the next step? First, we'll set up the work area safely. It's really important to keep all children and pregnant women out of the work area because lead dust is especially dangerous to them. But it's best to keep everyone who isn't helping out of the work area. Can I stay? You're not a child and you're certainly not pregnant. And you are helping, so yes, you can stay. We'll keep our pets away from the area too because they can get poisoned. They can also track lead dust all over our home. We'll put up a sign and a barrier such as yellow tape to remind people to stay away from the work area. If you're working outside near another home, ask your neighbors to close their windows and doors. 
explain that doing so will help protect them from lead poisoning. Okay, everybody's out. Let's get started. Not so fast. We have to protect the furniture and anything else in the room. Time to put you to work. In a room like this, we'll move furniture, rugs, clothing, toys, food, and other movable items away from the work area. Since we'll be painting the windows, we'll take down the curtains. For a larger project, such as painting a whole room, you can move everything out of the room or move everything to the center of the room. You need a protected work area large enough for you, your tools, and any surfaces you're working on. What about things that can't be moved, like, say, built-ins or kitchen countertops? For anything that can't be moved, cover it with heavy plastic sheeting called 6 mil polyethylene plastic sheeting. Seal the sheeting securely with duct tape. Then cover the floors at least 6 feet in all directions from where you'll be working. Now let's put all our tools and supplies on the plastic sheeting so we don't have to walk away from the work area with dust on our shoes to get what we need. Things like the 6 mil sheeting and waste bags, duct tape, spray bottles, wet sanding blocks, anything else? We also need a vacuum with a HEPA filter. A HEPA filter traps even very tiny particles of dust and keeps the dust from getting in the air. Check. Now we need to seal off the work area to prevent dust from spreading into clean areas of our home. We've got to cover the floor, counters, air vents, built-ins, carpeting, and anything we can't remove. We'll use 6 mil sheeting and secure all the plastic with duct tape. We'll need to throw away the covering after the job to avoid spreading lead dust to the next job. Besides being safer, plastic sheeting is cheaper than drop cloths. Next, we'll shut down forced air heating and ventilation systems and close all windows and doors to keep dust from spreading. But what if you're working outside? First, remind neighbors to close their windows and doors. If there are any items that can't be moved away from the work area, Cover them with 6 mil plastic sheeting and seal with duct tape. Cover the ground with plastic sheeting too and secure the sheeting. If the work area is near a sidewalk, street or property boundary, set up a vertical barrier of plastic sheeting over a strong framework to keep dust and debris inside. And avoid working on windy days to prevent dust and debris from leaving the work area. If you need to use a ladder outside, cut small slits in the plastic so the ladder doesn't slip. Now we're ready for step three, protecting ourselves from lead, dust, and debris. Okay, we've gathered what we're going to need. Safety glasses. Disposable gloves. A disposable painter's hat. Disposable shoe covers. And disposable coveralls. If the job were going to be really dusty, I would need to wear a respirator labeled N100 to avoid breathing in any lead dust. No eating, drinking, or smoking in the work area. You don't want lead dust getting into your body. And no putting on cosmetics, not even lip balm. Same reason. Always wash your hands and face carefully each time you leave the work area, before you eat or drink, and at the end of each workday. Are we ready to work now? Not quite. There are two things you need to remember to control the spread of lead dust. First, create as little dust as possible. Second, if you do create dust, keep it from spreading. To create as little dust as possible, use a spray bottle to lightly mist areas before you sand, scrape, drill, or cut. But of course, don't mist near live electrical outlets. Repeat the misting frequently to keep the surface constantly damp, but not soaked. Score paint with a utility knife before separating components. Pry and pull apart components instead of pounding or hammering. Remember, never spray water around electrical outlets, switches, or equipment. Well, I'm misting as I go, but I'm still creating some dust. Sure, that often happens, but you want to keep dust from spreading outside the work area. Clean up dust and debris immediately using a damp rag or tack cloth. Then put the debris in a waste bag. Don't leave dust or debris lying around. Also, keep the work area closed off from the rest of the house, and that will keep dust from spreading. But I might need to leave this room at some point, you know, to get a drink or go to the bathroom. Just make sure you clean up to remove lead dust from your clothes and body. Before you step off the plastic sheeting, remove and discard your disposable gear, such as shoe covers and coveralls. 
If you aren't wearing protective gear, wipe your shoes carefully and use a vacuum with a HEPA filter to remove dust from your clothes. And don't forget to wash your hands and face thoroughly. Okay, anything else I need to know about creating or spreading lead dust? Yes, there are certain activities you need to avoid completely. Such as? Here are some unsafe practices you should never use to remove lead paint. Dry scraping and dry sanding. Power sanding or grinding without a HEPA dust collection system to trap tiny dust particles. Using a high temperature heat gun or an open flame torch. Uncontained power washing. Uncontained abrasive blasting. And never use a broom to clean up. All of these methods can spread dangerous lead dust. Finally, never use chemical paint strippers that contain methylene chloride because that chemical causes cancer. Whew, looks like we're just about finished. Oh, not quite so fast. At the end of every workday and at the end of the whole job, we need to clean up carefully. Because lead dust sticks to surfaces, Cleaning up lead dust takes a bit of extra effort, but if you've prepared the work area, as we did, lead safe cleanup can be as easy as a careful cleanup after any other job. Remember, by cleaning up lead safe, you'll be protecting everyone around you from lead poisoning. Let's get started. First, we need to pick up any big pieces of debris. We'll put them in a heavy duty plastic bag and seal the bag with duct tape. Next, we'll fold the plastic sheeting with the dirty side inward and place it in another heavy duty bag. As before, we'll seal the bag with duct tape. We're going to store all bagged materials in a safe, secure location away from our family and neighbors. Then, depending on the amount of dust created, we may use a HEPA vacuum. It's important to vacuum slowly and carefully to be sure to clean up any remaining dust. Next, we'll need to wash walls, floors, and other hard surfaces in the work area. We'll wash from the top down and scrub hard. For large projects, we would wash all surfaces, whether we worked on them or not. We'll need two buckets, one with water and detergent and another with clean rinse water. I'll bet we'll have to rinse well and change the rinse water often. Right. When we finish washing, we'll put all of the dirty rags and mop heads in a heavy duty plastic bag and seal the bag with duct tape. We may need to double bag the waste to keep the bags from breaking. Of course, the waste should be stored in a safe location away from our family and neighbors until we remove it from our home at the end of the project. Finally, we'll clean thoroughly with the HEPA vacuum one more time. I think I have to clean myself up now. Yes, we both do. We don't want to spread any lead dust to the rest of our home, our car, or our neighborhood. Remember, before we leave the work area, We'll remove all of our protective gear and put it in a heavy-duty plastic bag and seal the bag with duct tape. As soon as we leave the work area, we'll wash our hands and faces. When we finish working for the day, we need to remove our work clothes and wash them separately from the rest of our laundry. Then we'll shower and wash our hair as soon as possible. We're all cleaned up. Now that we've finished the whole project, what do we do with the waste? You'll remember, Patrick, that before we started this project, I checked with our state and local public health and environmental protection agencies to find out how to dispose of the waste, including any waste water. Of course, we have to handle all the bagged waste carefully to avoid tearing the plastic bags and spreading lead dust around. Now we need to get the waste out of our home. Since we're using our car, we'll put the waste in the trunk, not the passenger area, and HEPA vacuum the trunk after we've disposed of the waste. I've checked our work to see if there are any paint chips, dust, or debris remaining, and there aren't any. So we're finished? Well, if you had found anything, you would need to clean that area again. Let's take a moment to remember why we're doing all this work. Lead poisoning is a really serious problem. If you're working on a child's room, be especially careful to work safely and clean up thoroughly. Your child's future could depend on it. Now let's review quickly the steps to working lead safe. Consider whether the work involves lead paint. Set up the work area safely to protect your family, your neighbors, and yourself. Use protective gear and lead safe work habits. Control the spread of lead dust. Leave the work area clean. Check your work. For more information about working lead safe, 
you can get a copy of Lead Paint Safety, a field guide for painting, home maintenance, and renovation work. Or you can take a Lead Safe Work Practices training course approved by the EPA. If you have any questions, check with your state's Department of Public Health. Well, there you have it. How to work lead safe in an older home. It's not all that difficult and it is very important. By taking a few simple precautions, you can do a great, safe job of fixing up a home. By working lead safe, you'll be helping your family, yourself, and your community. By the way, if you're still considering hiring someone to work on your home, be sure that the firm and key workers have been certified and that all workers have been trained in lead safe work under EPA's Renovation, Repair, and Painting Rule, or RRP. Hiring a lead safe contractor will protect your family's health and will maintain the safety of your home. And consider this, a contractor who has made the effort to become certified has shown professional responsibility and is following the law. The RRP practices are similar to the ones described in this video for do-it-yourselfers, but have more detailed requirements. For example, the contractor must give you a copy of a booklet entitled Renovate Right before starting such work. Look for the RRP logo to make sure your contractor is certified. For more information about the rule, see www.epa.gov forward slash lead. Thanks for your time. And good luck on your project.